Hello. Welcome to this LN training session. My name is Doug Strauss and I will be your logistics trainer for today. Today we are going to be creating, approving, and printing a sales order. To do this, let's start by opening sales orders. As you can see here, this is the sales orders here is just a list of all the sales orders that are entered into the system. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the new icon. When I click the new icon, it actually opens up a single sales order session. One of the things I want to point out to you now is that, number one, this is a multi-table session. As you'll notice at the top, this is the sales order header information, and at the bottom, the sales order line information. Additionally, you'll notice that there are tabs across the top up here. These tabs were added via the session personalization functionality that's in LN. So that instead of having to drill down to the sales order header to get to the additional fields that I might need to update, I can just go to these different tabs and update the information. Okay. The other thing I'd like to point out is mandatory fields. You'll notice the little red asterisk between the label and the actual field uh, area. These are the mandatory field indicators that are on the system so that you know which fields are actually mandatory that you have to enter regardless of what you're doing. Let's get started. Let me enter my business partner number. Okay. You'll notice that when I press enter the business partner number and I press tab, a lot of the information on this header session defaulted in. A lot of it came from the business partner. Some of it came from my user profile. And additionally, the system just defaulted certain data in, like the plan delivery and plan receipt date. Let's tab down to the customer order field. You'll notice that this field description is blue here. And this is something that I did when I did my personalization because I made this field mandatory and I wanted to know that I personalized this field, so therefore I changed the label to blue. So let's enter our customer PO number. So PO 2016-02-09-001. Press the tab key. There's the sales order type, which defaulted from my user profile, the sales office. The DES is the prefix for my sales order number, and the remainder of this will be assigned by the system when I save my order. Okay? You'll notice that now here's another field, the customer request date, that's blue, but it's highlighted. This has two purposes. Number one, again, to let you know that I personalized and added this field to the screen, but number two, this field was added by some new extendability functionality that N4 has added to LN called Customer Defined Fields. This allows me to add fields that I want to have in the system without modifying the standard source code. So again, the Customer Defined Field is something we added. So let's enter our customer request date. I'm going to do a minus You'll notice that when I did a minus, it defaulted to today's date. So a minus is today's date. A plus 10 would be 10 days from now. Okay, in the time, I'm going to put 1700, which is 5 o'clock. You'll notice the plan delivery date defaulted from the system as current date and time. I'm going to change, leave the date, but I'm going to change the time to 1700 to match the order above. And... You'll notice that the plan receipt date, as I tab through it, defaults also. So let's talk about these two fields for just a moment. The plan delivery date is the date we expect that order to leave our dock. So therefore, that's when it's going to leave our dock to go to the customer site. The plan receipt date would be the date that the customer expects that order to be on his dock. Well, this date can't be earlier than the plan delivery date. Therefore, that's why we created this customer request date so we could capture the customer's original request date for when he wanted the order. Okay. Now, at this point, I'm not going to cover the remainder fields. That will be covered in a different uh, presentation. 
But what I do want to do is I want to click the Add New Line field. You'll notice I got a pop-up message that said, hey, this customer is being policies outside of his credit limit. I'm going to click OK. Now, the system automatically put in the position, i.e. line number, based on the parameter settings I've got, that it starts at 10 and increments and increments of 10. I'm going to hit my tab key. It goes to the first field of the item field. This is part of a functionality called PCS projects within LN that's not going to be covered today, so I'm going to press tab one more time, and I'm going to enter my part number. Battery B. So I enter a battery B. I tab over to make custom again. That's still part of the PCS projects information that will be covered at a later date. The warehouse defaulted in, and it can come from a number of different places. It can come from the ship to business partner if there's a warehouse link to that. And if it is, then it automatically gets put onto the shipping tab at the, at the sales order header level and defaults down and has the major number one priority. If there's not a warehouse at the business partner level, it'll go look at the item sales data to see if this item should be shipped from a specific warehouse. If it's nothing there, then it'll go to the user profile, with being my user profile, and see if I have a warehouse link there. Because if I've got multiple people entering sales orders from different locations, there may be different warehouses each user is you know, shipping out of. And lastly, it'll go to the item ordering data to determine the uh, warehouse. Let's change our order quantity to 10. Press tab. Notice the shortage menu pops up, which tells me that I have a shortage. You'll notice in here in the middle there's some stuff called ATP, Available to Promise. We've set up for this item some Available to Promise information, and when I click ATP when available, single delivery, it's going to go out and run the Available to Promise routine in the background and determine when it can ship the complete order. And when I click OK, what the system did is you'll notice that the planned delivery date down here on the line got changed from 2-9 to 3-2 because of the ATP processing that the system went through. Okay, You'll also notice that the customer request date here, again, that new field, is not populated. But watch what happens when I hit the save up at the top. The system automatically pulled the date time from the header down to the line and stored it. This, again, is some more of the extendability functionality that Enforce provided called user exits, which allows me to go in for specific table functions and add some functionality, again, without having to modify source code. Okay, You'll notice now that my sales order status is free. I'm going to approve the sales order. You'll notice now that the sales order status is approved. So let's print it. At, you notice the printer icon here. I'm going to actually show you this first. There's a little drop-down box beside of it that shows all the different reports that you can get out of the sales order. You'll notice that the sales order acknowledgement RMA has a little blue dot beside of it. This is because this particular report has been predefined and linked to the icon. So if I come back up here and I click to the icon, it will automatically go to print the document. It'll, you'll notice here it says default settings are not available to run the appropriate quick flow mod. So it's, I haven't set it up, so I just click OK. And it comes up and says, what device do you want to print to? I'm going to zoom off, pick up a device, hit my tab key, and click Continue. And what the system is going to do now is it's printing the sales order no, uh, document. But because of functionality we've added into our system, it actually will output it to a temporary file on my laptop that I can open and it will show me that file in Acredat Adobe. And this is the sales order acknowledgement that has been printed. And you'll notice now that the sales order status is in process. So again, what we've covered today is creating a sales order, i.e. putting in the sales order header and adding a sales order line, approving the sales order and printing the acknowledgement.
I'd like to thank you for listening to this training session today. Have a good day. Bye-bye.